way in our lives. I invite us to open with prayer. Loving and generous Lord God, God who is to us a true parent, the strength of a mother and the father all rolled into one. Today we give thanks to you for your compassion. That word from Hebrew that reminds us that you are compassionate, that you are a womb-like God, one who sees each and every one of us as your children, belonging to you, deeply linked to you, a part of your joy, a part of your sorrow, a part of your life. And so living and loving God, we ask that you would make yourself known to us through the word, Jesus Christ, your Son, through the presence of your Holy Spirit amongst us, and that you'd open our hearts to receive your message of love and grace and your help for the lives that we lead. So be with us this morning, we pray in your precious name, and bless those who are mothers to us in this world. We give thanks to you for all that they have done and all that they are for us. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing the hymn, Jesus Stand Among Us in Thy Risen Power, and we sing it to the tune of Onward Christian Soldiers, so it's a bit of a marchy one, uh, and I invite you to, to sing with your masks on and to join us online. I didn't welcome those who are watching on Facebook, hello Facebook people and YouTube people and those who are watching later, nice to see you with us today, well, I hope it's nice to see us with you, but uh, let's stand and sing Jesus Stand Among Us. sing that more and more and and the usual words too but i invite you to be seated as we reflect on our psalm for today i sing to the lord a new song for he has done marvelous things his right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory the lord has made known his victory he has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations he has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of israel all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Amen. 
I just want to invite us to, to hold in our hearts and minds to imagine the sound of the sea roaring. I mean, we're quite far from the sea, and sometimes at night when the, when the clouds are low and the wind's blowing in the right direction, you can hear the waves breaking on the coast. Just imagine that sound that travels all around the coastlands of all the earth. Giant waves crashing into rocks. Rocks rolling back and forth under the water the sea roaring and all that fills it. Somewhere out at sea, somewhere, there's probably a whale breaching, jumping up into the sky and falling down again, splashing the water. The world and those who live in it, let the floods clap their hands. As we imagine torrents of streams rushing down mountains. Let the hills sing together for joy as we imagine a strong gale blowing through trees somewhere far away. We imagine the trees moving their branches as if they were clapping. Loving God, as we think of all these things, we remember that you are powerful and that you are good that you have created all things and all creation longs to worship you and praise you. You have filled us with your joy. You have filled the world with your joy, but sometimes we don't really pay attention to what it is you are doing. Sometimes we don't live according to the force of your Holy Spirit within us, but we go off in our own directions We become dry and destitute. We lose that sense of liveliness in our hearts, that sense of connection with you. So, Lord, we confess that we have sinned against you. Most especially in the attitudes that we have had that have led us far away from you. Teach us to bind ourselves to you again, we pray. Teach us to ask for your grace and your mercy. Teach us to live in you. Our attitudes have not been good. Our actions have been rebellious. Our words have not carried the message of your grace and love. O Lord, we confess all of these things in all our inadequacy and our brokenness. And we long to hear your words of grace. My child, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Speak those words into our hearts, O Lord, we pray. Speak those words of grace into our hearts, knowing that our sins are forgiven. Speak words of healing for those we have harmed and ourselves. And teach us to walk in the power of your, your Holy Spirit to be sources of healing and reconciliation rather than brokenness and division. Because, Lord, you are working in all creation to bring about your purposes. And in this season of Easter, we remember that resurrection has the last word. You, Jesus, rose again, even though our sin crucified you. You, Jesus, witness to the everlastingness of life and joy and hope. And so help us to hope in you and you alone. Amen. We pray together as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory 
now and forevermore. Amen. Our next reading is from John's Gospel, and I really was, I don't know, just kind of sat and stared at the scripture for, for a while this week and didn't really know how to preach it because sometimes when you see something written down or you see a beautiful artwork, you want to explain it to somebody, but you want to actually say, just look at it yourself. Don't let me try and tell you about it. It'll make more sense if you look at it. So I invite you just to receive these words and then I'll do my best to say something that'll help us to understand it more deeply. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. That's the verse that I've really got stuck on this week. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not call you servants any longer, because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, we pray, O Lord. Amen. Like I said, I got stuck on this verse, and I'm not sure if it's big enough for you to see if you're sitting here in church, but if you're watching on your screen, it should be big enough. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And it really is such a big thing to think about that joy that Jesus wants to be in us, that wants to make our joy complete. And we love that word joy, you know, you see it left over from Christmas decorations up in people's houses and uh, you can buy it at all the craft shops. People love selling the one that says joy, love, peace, and hope. And it might be on your garden wall or in your kitchen somewhere. And it's, it's just such a lovely, juicy, joyful word. But we don't really appreciate what it means. Does it remind us maybe when we see it to be joyful, to, to rejoice? Because we're blessed. We've seen such goodness in our lives. And and sometimes we forget that gift of joy that gives us a little bit of salt and flavor in our lives. The Christmas decoration. So important that it stays because it reminds us most especially of what Jesus brings. But that combines with the virtues of life, peace, joy, love, and hope. Four virtues that we remind ourselves around Advent time, around Christmas time. Four aspects of our lives that we should ask ourselves, where is my peace? As you make a decision, where is my peace in this decision? Where is my joy in this decision? Where is my love in this decision? Where is my hope? How, how does it reflect these four values of the things I do? Do I have peace in this? Do I see the prospect of joy and love and hope? And and it doesn't mean that everything is easy, because these sound like lovely words, peace, joy, love, and hope. Sometimes God gives us peace in difficult decisions. Sometimes hope is conditional upon us knowing that the moment is broken and it needs healing, but we have persistent hope because God has given us that hope. But all of these four virtues 
work together to make each and every one richer than the other. Peace, joy, love, and hope. As we come to Mother's Day, I noticed that they were selling lots of poiki kos food at, uh, at the pick and pay. They had a whole display, and I guess that maybe that's what us fathers are supposed to do on, on Mother's Day, is make a poiki and wash up afterwards. I think that's also an important thing that men need to learn. But I know that I make, a, I make a mean steak and Guinness pie inspired by Jamie Oliver. And I was up early this morning slicing things to make it. But the ingredients work together, you know. There's a layer of onions at the bottom, a layer of carrots so it's going to be nice and sweet, and then some mushrooms, and then the steak. Oh, it's making me hungry already. I'm thinking about it. And I couldn't get Guinness and nobody saw me going into the bottle store to buy milk stout, so I'm using that instead, but it's going to have that flavor. The rest I'll pour down the sink, I promise. But all of these ingredients bring each other out and bring each other to the point that they need to be, that we taste whatever it is that you're looking for, the mushrooms or the, or the steak or, or the pie or whatever it is. It brings each other out, and this is the ingredients for a meaningful life. Peace, joy, love, and hope. But what me, got me about this verse that we're looking at today is the simple way that Jesus says that his joy may be in you. My joy may be in you. And your joy may be complete. As we think about that, we think about what does it mean that Jesus says, my joy. Who's speaking here? Jesus. But Jesus isn't just another human being. Jesus is the Son of God as well as another human being. The co-creator of everything that is, that everything that was and is to come. We, we read the psalm from 98 about the, the roaring sea and the, and the wind and the trees, and we just imagined that great joyful creation praise. We're talking about the co-creator of everything that is, the composer of the songs of birds and the designer of their feathers and their beaks and their beauty and However they came to be, if you're an evolutionist or a creationist, I'm a both, I'm a bothist. However they came to be in all their beauty, God's hand is in all of that. The one who decided that water should be put together in ways that it sparkles and dances when it rushes to the shore. The author of all the joy that there is, the author of all the beauty that there is in the world, wants his joy to be in you. God's joy, deep inside you, bubbling up from within you, and a complete kind of joy. And sometimes we think that's some sort of just, you know, happiness rather than depression. It's a weird thing to think, but you can actually be a bit melancholy and still have that little salty piece of joy inside your life. You can still recognize its sparkle, even though your body might be getting you down. Because God's joy is different to the sort of normal happiness of life. God's joy is accompanied by peace, love, and hope. But we see this joy in the tremendous power in nature that comes from God, causing trees to grow and bring forth blossoms and fruit, grass activating an ecosystem that empowers and gives life. And the metaphor that Jesus has been talking about just before this in John 15 from verse 1 is the metaphor of being part of the vine. God's nourishment God's power works with the farmer, the gardener, the grower to bring forth the sugars and, and whatever else goes into, I don't know what goes into these things, 
that give us the energy and the power to live, that gives us fullness of joy in each of our hearts, that helps us to feel completeness, connectedness to God, to life, to have all the fullness of joy that God has created for us. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And what Jesus has just said is, I am the vine and you are the branches. Now, I've mentioned a bottle store, so now you're going to be thinking all the wrong sort of things. But in Jesus' time, just about everybody drank what we'd call wine. Slightly fermented, but not the kind of stuff that we drink today. The wine of Jesus' time would have been given to everybody like a cool drink, and it would nourish you. You know how water is lacquer. It's nice to drink water, but when you get that nice sugary juice, you suddenly get that burst of energy and power. I remember when Zach was small, he had a running race, and I, I especially bought a red, red uh, mixer drink, and he won. I knew he'd win if he had the red cool drink first. I don't know if it's illegal to give kids red cool drink. But it was a Saturday, so the teachers didn't have to deal with him for the day. But you know how that sugary juice gives you that burst of energy that you need to live in? And that's what those who were harvesting, those who were working in the fields, would enjoy when they got their, their wine. Not the kind of wine that knocks you out and makes you sleepy and makes you drunk, but the kind of fruit juice slightly fermented because they hadn't invented pasteurization back then, that would gladden the heart and fill you with life and fill you with joy so that God's joy could be complete in you. And all that we need to have this complete joy in our hearts, Jesus reminds us is to, and he uses words like, remain in my love, abide in me, it comes to make us complete as we allow God to love us. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. So I was thinking about Mother's Day so I was thinking about being a parent in general, or maybe just being a human being, is I always feel like I just don't have the resources to do it all. I don't know, is that how you feel? As mothers and fathers and preachers and friends, we are completely aware of the fact that we just can't do it. Jesus is telling us that we can. Jesus is telling us that that you have the ability to be who I created you to be. And, and the wonderful thing is I'm, I'm very pleased with the way my children are turning out, and I don't think it's really any credit to me. I think it's just the grace of God that has come through. But Jesus is reminding us to remain in him and receive the power and the grace and the, and the energy that we need to be a blessing to everybody else simply by receiving. I find it so beautiful that Jesus is fully aware in John 15 verse 9 of the fact that the Father has loved him. This is the beauty of, of a Trinitarian God. Father loves Son. Father loves Holy Spirit. Son loves Father. Son loves Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit loves the Father and the Son. And this love is poured in between the Trinity that none of them is full of self-love and self-grandeur. But all of them are always pouring out to make the others greater. Jesus, fully aware that the Father loves him, is able to love others. You know what they say, you can't pour from an empty cup. It's hard being a mom, it's hard being a dad, it's hard being a human being. And if Jesus tells us to obey his commands, we find it's even more difficult because his command is simply that we walk in love, that we love, 
We simply will not be able to do it if we don't begin with allowing ourselves to be loved as the Father has loved me. I know us children can, can be pretty mean sometimes and we say horrible things to our mothers and mothers feel unloved. But we know that children do love their mothers and mothers sometimes don't allow themselves to receive the love that their children have for them. I think it's fathers too because we don't feel worthy of that love. We feel like we're always a, a letdown and we're inadequate and we just can't do it. But, but receive that love. Don't always look for it in, in your own love language. Uh, I know that some people's love language is washing dishes and, and doing all those things. And sometimes us uh, family members let each other down in those things. But receive that love that you have from your family in the ways that they express it. And as a family, express that love in the ways that others understand it. Learn from the Trinity of God that Jesus is able to love and bear fruit and be a blessing in the world, not in his own power, but in the power of the Father's love. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. He's inviting us to receive his love, to know that we are loved, to know beyond all the brokenness and the messing of, of the world that we are beloved. And in that belovedness, we are able to love. And I know that sometimes our relationships are broken and messed up. And sometimes children and mothers are are alienated from one another. Children and fathers are alienated from one another. We can see it even in Jesus. Even though he, as, as the, the parent, as representative of the Trinity, comes to this world that is his own, the world still rejects him. But because his love comes from the Father, he is able to still love and love and love. He reminds us, I am the vine, you are the branches. This passage that we've read today from, from 15 verse 9 to 15 verse 17 skips out, I think, what's an important uh, literary characteristic of the writing of the Gospels. These little repeated phrases that become brackets or paragraph markers. In verse 7, Ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. In verse 16, then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Remind us that this all hangs together. And if we think about the analogy that Jesus has been using up till this point, it was the analogy of a vine. And the fruit at the end of the branch doesn't ask the vine for I don't know, sports cars. Uh, what would fruit ask for? The ability to become an orange, maybe, if it's a grape. It doesn't ask for anything but the nourishment that it needs to become the best grape it could possibly be. And those grapes at the end of the branches, they really try to get all the sap they can possibly get. And as the sun shines on them and and all the good things happen, they just become more and more who they ought to be. If we ask in God's name, we're not asking for things that are against God's will. But we are asking for what God can give us to help us to become sweeter fruit, to become more nourishing fruit, to become better people, to make the world a better place. And... Uh, I don't know, maybe I should be an advert, advertiser for what's that pure joy fruit juice or whatever you can buy, because that's what I've been thinking of. But just the idea that, that that sweetness, that goodness that comes from God can just give us that, that pickup 
that we need to go out and share the joy and love of God. A deeper, more meaningful, a stronger sense of underlying joy. So that my joy, says Jesus, the joy of God may be in you. And that your joy may be complete. We always thought it was a bigger house or more money in the bank that would complete us. But it's not. It's God's love filling our hearts. Let's pray. Jesus, in this moment of tenderness, we hear you say, the Father loves me. We often think of you, Jesus, as kind of being a, a standalone figure, able to do amazing things and love amazingly and care for people and nurture and do all those things that you do in your own strength. But we need this reminder to know that you, Jesus, in all your vulnerability and fragility, draw your love, your joy, your peace and hope from the love of the Father, the strength and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Remind us that we can't make it on our own. We don't really need reminding. But remind us that our hope is in you that our joy is in you, that we can receive strength from you to be the people that we are called and created to be. To be the mothers and the fathers, the pastors and the friends, the Bible study leaders, the stewards, the colleagues, whatever we are called to be in your name, you will give us the strength that we need to do it. Help us on this day to celebrate loving those who have nurtured us in the world and being loved by them. Lord, in this world where family lives are broken and confused by all the factors that distress us, we continue to pray that your kingdom would come. That your will would be done and that healing, especially in families, would touch the world. Lord, as we know that sometimes our idea of the perfect family is impossible, help us to recognize the single fathers and single mothers the aunties and the uncles and grandparents who play such important roles in each and every child's life. We lift up to you the teachers who nurture children day after day and we thank you for the new appreciation that homeschooling moms and dads have for them. Continue to sustain all who care for our children and continue to help our children to grow up with a sure and certain knowledge of your love and your presence. And Lord, as we especially think of mothers and children and all of those relationships at this time, we pray for government, we pray for business, we pray for the church, that each and every one of these aspects of our, of our societal order would recognize the priority of family and love, to make people whole, to teach people to live whole lives and to be the best that they each can be. Strengthen us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite us, as we come to a close, to sing the hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. And the organist is going to start, so you better stand, or else she's going to give you a fright. <clears throat> Blessed assurance.
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. notices and remain standing because we're going to also take up our offering as we go out. By way of notices, next week, this 9.30 service will be a 9 o'clock service. So we'll be able to start a little earlier and we'll be starting our 11 o'clock service again, which is very exciting. Um, excuse me while I cough. <coughs> I'm very excited about that, but also just pray that as we begin again, um, we are we are watching the graphs for that ominous third wave that we're all concerned about. And so pray that we'd continue to pay attention, to stay safe, to cough into our elbows and wear our masks and sanitize and all of those things. So the 11 o'clock service will start again in Isikosa and uh, um, mixed African languages and English too. And the 9 o'clock service will be at 9 o'clock instead of 9.30. And over the weeks to come, we'll also look for ways to start Sunday school and get all of those things going so that some sort of normal will be back, but it's quite a logistical uh, uh, confusion. So help us to help each other. Pray for wisdom, for safety, for, for volunteers, for cleaners, <laughs> sanitizers. And thank you very much to Doreen and the team who have been doing such a great job so far. And so as we move out, we're going to ask you to present your offerings, if you can put them in the little church box outside, or preferably give by EFT, which is best for us, because then we don't have to go to the bank and do all those processes. And uh, yeah, that's it. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you so much for the many ways in which you bless us. This morning we stand as a sign that we know that everything that we have comes from you, and of your own we give you. Take us now and send us out into the world to be your servants, to bring your joy, and to live with a sense of your joy inside us. Help us, Lord, to know that as the Father loved you, Jesus, we can also experience that love. and Go out in strength and love to love our children, our mothers, our fathers, 
and all those who surround us that we nurture and do nurture us. So we pray for each other as we say, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless.